Tom here from Lawrence Systems. Let's talk about open source mesh VPNs. And calling them VPN, I guess, is accurate. They do solve connectivity problems of devices on separate networks and allow them to talk to each other, but they don't do it in the same way a traditional routed VPN, such as WireGuard, OpenVPN, or IPsec tunnels work. And that's why I wanted to make this video to kind of dive into this topic to show the different use cases for them because they're not replacements for those that are VPNs. They just solve problems differently, but that different problem you may have may be the reason you need one of these type of VPNs to solve that problem. And the two products I'm gonna be talking about today are Nebula and Zero Tier. Now I haven't done any videos yet on Nebula as of the time of this video. If I do, I will update that and leave it linked below. I will leave a link to my Zero Tier video. They both work on the same principle of how they function using UDP hole punching. They have different implementations of it, so there's some nuances that are different. But that's not the part I'm gonna focus on because they both solve problems in a very similar way. That's the thing I wanna talk about is how they differ from traditional VPNs. Before we dive into all the details, let's first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now, back to our content. Now, as I said, I'll leave a link to my deeper dive into zero tier, but let's at least talk a little bit about Nebula and how it's faring. And I say that because zero tier is well vetted, lots of clients, lots of people use it, and it's a pretty solid protocol that I still think is really great. Nebula is a little bit different and it's only self-hosted at this time. So if you stand up a Nebula system, you have to stand it up all on your own from the receiving nodes, the beaconing nodes they refer to as lighthouses, all that has to be done on your own. And if you're wondering of about security or scalability of it, I'm on the Slack engineering blog here and it was born inside of Slack. And just to read the blurb to get you an idea of how it scales, what is the easiest way to securely connect tens of thousands of computers hosted at multiple cloud service providers in dozens of locations around the globe? So it does work at scale. And let's go take a look here. They have a GitHub you can download and get started. But by the way, 100% command line driven, very manual way you set this up. And Define Networking is a newer company. I actually spoke a little bit on Twitter with the developer. Really great things they're doing here. This is all early phase as far as putting an interface on it. The technology, the underlying of it's very well proven by Slack. Obviously, you've probably heard of them. They're a fairly large company connecting thousands of devices using this. And um, it, without a front end though, that may be a little bit more difficult, but it's a great DevOps tool and allows easy scripting for deployment. And they have a deep dive video that is actually really great if you wanna to watch to talk about scalability problems when you're the size of Slack and why they had to invent this product. And they are aware of zero tier and the problem some people have had with zero tier is despite it's being a wonderful product that I've recommended many times and have solved problems with, the challenge again with zero tier is the fact that it's harder to host the control yourself. So you have some level of trust that zero tier will host the beacons that do all the connections. That does not give zero tier immediate visibility into your network, but it does mean part of that control plane is held there. But there is a way I know, and I'm not gonna get too off topic, but there is a way, yes, I know you can host zero tier yourself. Uh, there's a completely separate project that allows for this. And like I said, that's kind of off topic. I'll leave a link below in into that. Now, Zero Tier does have really great documentation, lots of details in the way their installer works. That's something right now, as of this moment, January 5th, 2020, it's kind of lacking over at Nebula. They don't have a ton of documentation, just this write-up and just this video. And if I get around to doing a tutorial on this, which I think I will, um, let me know in the comments below and that will encourage me to do it. The system is relatively easy to set up. But of course, there's a lot of expanding and scripting you can do on top of that. Now let's talk about the differences in these VPNs and what makes them so much different than a traditional VPN solution. And we'll start out right here. 
Now, first thing is privacy VPNs that use routing such as WireGuard or OpenVPN being the two most popular. That's what I have listed up here. That's like your PIA. By the way, I have an affiliate link down below if you'd like to sign up. But if you're looking at a privacy-oriented VPN, the goal of those is you take all the data that's on, let's say, a laptop, and we encapsulate it in a VPN through one of these privacy networks, and now all the hops in between, such as my service provider, don't get to see what information I'm traversing, and my public IP address becomes that of the privacy VPN. This is not a problem that can be solved easily by Zero Tier or Nebula. Not designed for that at all. There are ways you can make routing work in it, but it's not the way that solution works. Now, let's go down here and talk about like site A, site B, and site C. And this is a traditional VPN setup that you'll see where site A needs to access resources on site B and on site C, and site B needs to access resources on site C. So you build these VPNs, and there are routing protocols that allow this to work quite well where things get a little bit more difficult, but yes, those routing protocols do work for this, is add site D, E, F, G. Put a thousand of them in there. Now you have a lot of complexity, and if you don't build either a hub spoke system that creates a central point of failure, you create this more mesh style is what it's referred to, where you have all these different VPN talking to each other across all these different sites and all these different rules, and that becomes kind of a complexity management challenge. And that you know, it becomes that much more complicated when you have an outside user. Where does that user connect? Do they connect here? We just bring their, a VPN connection to this firewall, and then there's more routing rules to route this user to this site, but they also need access to the other sites, and that problem scales out. So this is where traditional VPNs just don't solve that scalability problem. Let's introduce you now to the way Zero Tier and Nebula work. Now, Zero Tier and Nebula set up a beaconing server. And I say beaconing server, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the cloud. And a matter of fact, in Nebula, if you put it in the cloud, you have to put it in whatever cloud you want to put it in. It's very platform agnostic. You could also just run it at one of your locations that has static IP. That is the first core of the way both of these work. Zero Tier solves this by having their own beaconing servers. And the beaconing servers are a way to know the location of all the devices. And if you first glanced at this, you would probably think that I'm solving the problem by everything contacting the beaconing server and routing through it, but that's not how it works. And that's where the diversion comes in from a traditional VPN solution. Matter of fact, one of the neat things that both Zero Tier supports, well, Zero Tier actually natively is built this way with many beaconing servers globally, is you can add more than one in both of these devices, both of these scenarios, Nebula and in Zero Tier. Well, that means they have the ability to simultaneously talk to more of these servers. This is how you build the redundancy. But it's still not clear right away how that actually helps. If you're thinking, okay, now they can route through this one or that one, but now I've created choke points. That's where the UDP hole punching comes in to solve the choke point problem. And by the way, you notice that it's not the firewalls at all. They're only providing internet access at this point. They're not even involved in the VPNing at any level. You don't do any firewall config changes. They all talk to these servers, and then the server figures out where everything is and starts creating UDP hole punches to get the devices to talk to each other. So site B has this particular resource, the server over here, site C, and site A. And both of these tools do the same thing. They add an extra adapter, an extra network interface. Standard network interface gets added to these, whether it's Windows, Linux, anything that can run their client software. So the client software is actually getting loaded on every individual host, not on the firewall. And the firewall doesn't have to be aware of it in any way. So you take the host, adds the extra network adapter. As a matter of fact, I can show you what that looks like. Right here's my zero tier adapter on my laptop, which has this IP address. So zero tier works this way. Nebula, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it a Nebula adapter. Zero tier starts with ZT for theirs. Pretty straightforward though. It just adds an extra adapter and then you just start doing everything by IP address. But I'll get to the point of how this works shortly here. So. Each one of these devices has that extra adapter added. There is a process that is out of scope of this particular talk where they are authenticated. The authentication method for zero tier versus the authentication for Nebula are very different in implementation, but the concept is the same. You're gonna have an IP address assigned to every single host, a subnet slash network and IP added to these. Then there's firewall rules that are applied at the host level. Nebula goes a step further and has really slick group systems for security. And it's one of the reasons I think Nebula is a really cool installation for a DevOps team, and which is really what Slack 
is when you look at the way they have to manage your back end. That's one of the reasons I want to review it as a solution because it goes a little bit further and has a different set of rules compared to the way zero tier does. But zero tier does have rules as well. So it's not like all nodes can instantly talk to each other on this network. It does have some defined rules that make them all play nice. Now let's talk about how the magic happens, which isn't really magic. It's just UDP hole punching. And I tried to do it as simple as possible for a very complex topic. We have each of these that are going to have their private IP address assigned to them by zero tier or Nebula. And these devices reach out through the firewall and talk to the beaconing server or all of the beaconing servers. They have a process by which they figure out which ones to notify their existence. So they're notifying their existence and what it's paying attention to, the beacon server wants to know what the public IP address is on each firewall. So this device and this device both reach out to 1.1.1. Let's just assume we're just using some public IP addresses here for assumption. They reach out to that. And then the beaconing server says, okay, this one is at 8.8.8 and this one's at 9.9.9. .9. And then it tells a little bit of a lie via UDP. And I say a little bit of a lie because that's the best way I can think of to describe it. It's going to spoof it. So whenever you have a firewall open up, there is a UDP path that's going to open up and a high port number is assumed. It does know what high port number that is going across here. It's then going to bend it, so to speak. It's going to figure out what port was opened up over here for that particular UDP piece of traffic that was initiated by this device through this firewall and find that high port number. Then it's going to find the same answer over here of what the high port number is there. Then it's going to take those two ports and get them to talk to each other without going through the beacon itself. Now, if for some reason the firewall really doesn't like it in edge case, yes, they do have the ability to route through the beacon. But I have actually tried this on quite a few different firewalls and quite a few different rules, and it's pretty amazing how well this works. We've even done some testing with some friends, especially with Zero Tier. We were shocked at how few large corporate networks have any type of defense, so to speak, against this. And I say against this because we were doing it for kind of an exfiltration demo to, can we get this out there? Can we get IP addresses inside of a very large enterprise company that my friend worked for? And he was shocked that his security team didn't knock on the door. He had the blessing to do testing. That's what he did for this company. Um, it was to test things, to test their security. And this one was an interesting thing that even large enterprise firewalls don't seem to even care that these UDP holes happen and that traffic is, you know, getting back to these devices. Protecting against it is actually going out of scope of this because it's not something that's easy to protect against because so many things actually use this. This is not unique to Nebula or Zero Tier. UDP kind of has to pass back and forth. Passing UDP back and forth right here between two different devices and then kind of bending the rules a little bit of UDP I, it's still kind of a good use case for the way this works. And what makes this also interesting is it doesn't have to leave the network. Let's say you had two devices and we'll go ahead and duplicate this device. And this device was subnetted, but physically behind the same IP address, but maybe on a different subnet. So there may be rules where two different devices can't talk to each other. But if you take and assign those devices to one of these networks, both works the same, whether it's Nebula or Zero Tier, this device, despite being on a different subnet from here, is able to actually just loop through the firewall and get close to line speed. So let's say we only had a connection between these two sites that was, or even between the beacon that was a one meg connection, but you have a gig connection internally in the network and the network is able to route because remember I said they would be on different subnets. So they're able to route between them. It will actually loop the internet connection between two internal devices at close to line speed. There is a little bit of overhead. And I demoed this with zero tier where two devices cannot ping each other. They are in separate subnets that have rules that say these subnets cannot talk to each other, but the ports are opened up on the device and it kind of creates a loop that that loop, instead of going all the way across, actually kind of like an internal loop to get them talking. It's actually really fascinating how all of that works and it's all initiated over the beacon. So to say that these solve the problem the same as a routed firewall would be misleading because routing firewalls still have a very strong purpose. For example, privacy-oriented VPNs, like I mentioned at the beginning, are definitely better suited to a routed firewall, such as WireGuard or OpenVPN. Also, use cases I have. For example, my lab is remote when I'm at home, and I want to be able to take my laptop wherever I'm at and get into my lab, and I don't want to install a 
device extra network adapter through one of these tools and load it on every single device I play with in my lab or some devices that you may have in your office or network may not be easily well, not easy at all to load that particular tool on there. So a routed network would make a lot more sense. So you VPN into the office and you have access to all the resources and things that are over there, especially, like I said, for devices that may not have any ability to talk to it. Now, both Zero Tier and Nebula have the option for adding specialized routes to get something on the inside of a network and do that. But that's kind of a outside their own use, maybe it would work for you, but you can see how that may be a little bit more complicated and a traditional VPN is of course, probably more desirable. Now, both of these do not have any type of actual user authentication either, not natively built into either system versus a VPN. If you wanna revoke a user, you can. If you wanna revoke someone zero to you, do it a little differently, you invalidate that particular node and the same thing with Nebula, you're going to invalidate a node by revoking its signing certificate. So both of them have ways to do it. It's just handled very differently. And by the way, Zero Tier and Nebula, as of right now, January 5th, I'm not aware of any deep integration they have to tie into something, let's say, like Active Directory or other user authentication databases that you might have. So once again, they may not solve those type of problems. But I wanted to raise some awareness because they are excellent solutions. They are scalable. They have been deployed both at scale. Zero Tier's actually got quite a few clients and I know we've solved some people's problems, especially with some unique server connectivity that they needed with roaming IP addresses and different devices uh, that needed to be out in the field and get data back without thinking about VPNing all the time or dealing with any troubles for VPN and zero tier just solve that problem. And for Slack, well, they're pretty big. And I think you get the idea that yes, if it works for Slack, it probably scales for whatever project you're working on. And it's a great way for, you know, you have multi-cloud systems, you need a lot of connectivity and you want to tie in some DevOps engineers, watch that video they did over at Define Networking. And I'll leave a link to that. Uh, breaks down a really solid use case of how they handle it, why it's a very secure solution and how security is handled within it uh, from a deployment standpoint. And so you can manage things. And they're using Ansible, I believe, uh, for some of the deployment demos. Uh, they don't have any public facing, you kind of do your own scripting right now. Uh, but that's right now and Define Networking is kind of a startup. And like I said, it's something I'm keeping an eye on because I like having these type of tools to solve problems people bring to me or clients may have. And I go, you know what would really work good? One of these solutions, which is why I did this whole video is just to kind of describe. They're not dropping replacements for the, your traditional VPN. They solve the problem differently, but sometimes people have different problems that need to be solved. And this is just more tools I wanted to make you aware of. Once again, I'll leave links all below. If you want me to do that demo on Nebula, which I'll probably do, but uh, leave some comments and let me know. And that'll probably encourage me to do it sooner. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.